Uh, I am RJ City, and I am back, as they say in show business. If you're in show business, that's a very popular phrase. You might hear it a lot. I'm back, and then people will laugh for three to five minutes. Uh, I'm back with another uh, Ask RJ, because, you know, uh, we're all locked up, and I'm sure people have a lot of burning questions for me. Let's get to the bottom of me. I think that's very important that when all this is going on, we keep the focus on myself. I haven't a uh, themed Ask RJ at all. This is a grab bag, a smorgasbord, a menagerie, if you will, of darn fine questions. So let's not waste any more time. I am having coffee. This doesn't count as coffee and underwear because I am somewhat clothed. Our first question is from Johnny Fuego, uh, a fine participant in my life. He said, RJ, if you had to remake Golden Girls for the modern day age, not that it would or should ever be touched, thank you. Who would your four be? I think they really tried it with Hot in Cleveland, and they were hoping they would age more. The problem is, with the Golden Girls, they were way less old than you think they are. If you think about it in your head, you're like, oh, these girls are 75 and 80 years old. Meanwhile, they're like in their 50s <laughs> they're doing it. It's really weird how much longer the lifespan has gotten. But if I had to pick my cast, I was thinking about this a while ago, um... I would say we would start with the cast from the First Wives Club. I would love to see uh, Bette Midler. I would love to see a Goldie Hawn uh, as perhaps a Rue McClanahan. And I would love to see a, a Diane Keaton. Uh, who else? Maybe a Jane Fonda and a Lily Tomlin. Then we get into Grace and Frankie territory. There are a bevy of uh, older actresses that would perfectly fit the bill, but maybe they should throw a man in there. I would like to see perhaps Henry Winkler as the Rose character. Those are my choices. Uh, our next question is from Emily Agostini. She says, RJ, how is your heel turn working for you? Well, since I've turned heel, I really don't think I've had a show. Uh, so you could think of it two ways. Yeah, uh, sorry, my, my tongue is because of the coffee. I, I'm not sick. I don't have a condition. Dear Lord. I'll scrape it later. How is your heel turn working for you? Well, uh, yeah, not good. I haven't had a show since, so I'm thinking my heel turn was so good that it really just turned people off wrestling, which is what you want as a bad guy. So I would say it's going great and horribly. Uh, our next question, Joe Crack, fine name, says, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? A couple days ago, I was talking about the wonderful theme song to where in the world is Carmen San Diego. Think coming down the west coast of it says in Carolina. Sticky finger gum shoe from today's on to Belize. Sing a face the west coast as it is down to China. Tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego. And I'm thinking about it. Has anyone actually checked San Diego? Or is that too obvious? I mean, it's in her name. If I was to call someone Bobby Toronto, I would assume it's because he is indeed from and in Toronto. So I would probably suss around the San, the greater San Diego area, just throwing it out there. Gilbert Goldbug says, uh, if you could cut a promo on any one 80s TV show, which would it be and why is it Alf? Um, which would it be and why is it Alf? Would I want to cut a promo on Alf? I'll tell you something. Half the time, Alf was a puppet, obviously, you can tell. But the the other half, they had a little person, a smaller actor, be in the suit and move around. And that guy does not get any credit at all. And he really made him come to life, to be honest with you. Uh, we got way too crazy in Alf. His merchandising did not justify how good or how popular the show was. I don't know, it was obviously not that good, even by those weirdo standards, but it was in the merchandising boom where there was all Alf, all Mr. T, all Pee Wee Herman, all Hulk Hogan, uh, and people went crazy. And he was cute. Cute for perhaps an animated movie, although he did have a cartoon. But I don't think um, we should look back on him that fondly. The Chick Diva said, so list off two of your favorite wrestlers from different promotions, indie ones so we can learn more about them, and if you've ever had a match with them. Well, uh, there's one guy who, who I do a, a love very much. I've wrestled him. I've teamed with him. And I'm scheduled to wrestle him again. I was at the end of April, but I'm going to assume that's perhaps on hold right now. His name is Psycho Mike Rollins. He's 
uh, from the Toronto area. He's wrestled a bunch of different places as Psycho Mike. We teamed together with the aptly and, and very meta hip named Two Guys was the name of our team. Uh, I think he's fantastic. I think he's a very, very intelligent. And I've been on all sides with him. Uh, and I love him very much. As for another person, there's someone I'm currently getting into and I haven't met him. I don't even really think I've seen the guy wrestle. His name is Luigi Primo and he's a master pizza maker. And uh, well, I'm, I'm just fond of him. And one day perhaps we can knead a margarita together. Uh, next question is why did Fonzie never wear the windbreaker after season two? Because they were dipping into the coolness. I think Fonzie was originally supposed to be a lot meaner, a lot more of perhaps a bully the way a Roger Klotz was uh, on Doug, the wonderful cartoon Doug. Uh, I'm also including brand spanking new Doug. Remember when they moved from Nickelodeon to Disney? Okay. Anyway, I think uh, Henry Winkler was such a good actor, he added more dimensions to the character than they even thought possible. And it gave him a, a warmth and an endearingness, and, and a depth. But I think as an actor, he needed that leather jacket. I think it was more a centering tool for the Wink Man more than anything else. By the way, if you're one of those weird people who likes to watch any movie to do with wrestling, my favorite wrestling movie of all time, and it's, it's unsung, and you need to definitely look it up. It's called The One and Only, and it stars Henry Winkler uh, as an actor who fails in the business and tries to become a wrestler. So it's it's based on my life story. First off, uh, says Galactic Gunslinger. They said, uh, first off, how are you holding up? Oh, by the way, <laughs> I totally forgot to mention this. This backdrop here is the wonderful uh, Paul Lind. It was a shower curtain gifted to me uh, by David Arquette, because I'll tell you something, he doesn't know how to wrestle, he doesn't know how to act, the man knows how to buy gifts. He knows what I like, that's for sure. And I thought it would make a nice backdrop, you know, maybe for the rest of my life. Maybe this is how I'll take uh, video conferencing calls now. How are you holding up? I answered that. I have a pull in shower curtain, so the answer is great. Second, what's the one match you would recommend I watch to know who you are as a wrestler? I would just say watch my promos and draw your own conclusions. Uh, if I had to suggest one match... I would say the death match between Gregory Iron and myself. It was intense. It was brutal. We left it all in the ring. We literally laid our lives on the line. And, and when I'm gone, I think that's the one match that's going to stand the test of time. Tabby Lava Lamp says, have you ever considered getting a B. Arthur neck tattoo? No, because I have her on my knee and I have her in my heart and I have her all over my room. And the, the issue with a neck tattoo is that I can't I can't look at it. I don't want to stare in the mirror enough. I would rather her all over me so I can just look and see. Uh, I've, I have considered getting a tattoo. Like, I've thought about it. People go, well, why don't you get it? And I think about it. I'm like, there's nothing I want on my body. And it would be so small and so hidden that nobody would know it's there. And it's, you know... It's all for naught, really. I would rather have the wonderful pictures I have of her and not of my neck. I got a good neck. I don't want to sully it. I don't think neck tattoos are a good look for anybody. Uh, the next question is from Fish Fry 2 Where in the hell has David Arquette been hiding? At his compound, the Arquette uh, compound. I've been talking to him every couple days. He's checking in. I'm checking in on him. He's going stir crazy. He was going stir crazy before this, before he was uh, under lockdown. Uh, and perhaps if I can work out his technological kinks, if he can futz with the antenna on his roof, we may be making a few videos very soon. Johnny Fuego is back with a second question because this guy gotta know. Gotta know. You know what I mean? Uh, Sally Jesse Raphael, Jenny Jones, or Ricky Lake? Which one of these three would you want sitting across from you asking all of the hard-hitting questions in an exclusive tell-all interview? Gotta go with Sally Jesse. Jenny Jones, Riggy Lake are good, but on the spectrum of, like, decent talk show to, like, straight trash, like Maury, which isn't bad. It's just, I mean, what it is. They're way closer to Maury than they are to a Dick Cavett, perhaps. Uh, so Sally Jesse is, I think, a little closer. So to interview, listen, if I was uh, in, in a huge sex triangle with a bunch of celebrities that blew up all of a sudden and there was a cult involved, immediately I would go on Jenny Jones and Ricky Lake. But just for my life the way it is now, 
I think Sally Jesse would not only handle me, but she would enjoy it. Uh, Lonely Banshee says, what's the one thing you'd like to see in a great work of literature about wrestling? Well, I do read a lot of books on wrestling, uh, but most of them are analytical, scholarly, like the role of gender performance in wrestling, and, and they're great. They're very interesting to read. But uh, a great work of literature would perhaps obviously uh, be fictional. I would like a series of debaucherous tales, short stories, uh, debaucherous tales, all taking place uh, in wrestling. Keep them short, almost like uh, scary stories to tell in the dark, but of wrestling debauchery and sadness. I hope it's, I hope it's sad. You know, the wrestler, the movie, captured the sadness, but they also romanticized it and made it very big. I live my sadness on a very small scale, and I'd like to see that captured. Missy Sherrick said, I noticed your shells of knickknacks when watching bedtime stories with RJ. Yes, there are a bunch of things there. What do you collect, and what is your favorite? So that shelf has a bunch of very old uh, toys, trolls, Barbies, dolls, some... I had some of my mother's, uh, there's Disney VHSs. I have the white Disney VHSs. You know what I mean? That we have to like pop them open. They only made them in that giant. Cause I wanted to say, this is a Disney film. Very smart marketing idea. Um, what do I collect? I have slowly started a collection of Jerry Lewis memorabilia. I have a Jerry Lewis watch. I have a couple Jerry Lewis pens. I have a Jerry Lewis 25th anniversary telethon shirt from a local station in Detroit. I have a Jerry Lewis race car, like Hot Wheels. Uh, and of course, my prized possession, I have a jacket that was custom made uh, for Jerry. Uh, I had also sent David Arquette uh, Jerry Lewis's favorite cologne, which we've yet to open. And I think we should put on the jackets, because he has one too, spray the cologne and have ourselves a little seance. Uh, Zach said, who in wrestling would you cast in a reprisal of The Love Boat? I'm just going to list people. Uh, you know, Hulk Hogan was in an episode of The Love Boat. Uh, Nug, my dear friend Nug, he's on Aftermath. It's a show in Canada after Raw, if you're not familiar. Uh, he's worked on a cruise ship before, so I think he would be perfect. Uh, David Arquette, uh, Dalton Castle, Psycho Mike. Uh, Holla Dead. Uh, who else? Solo Darling. Uh, Jessamine Duke. Shayna Baszler could do magic. Uh, she could entertain the guests. Um, and who else? Oh, and the Nasty Boys. Because the only way this ends is with them making a hole in the boat and the whole thing sinking. Uh, Sabrina says, do you think dinosaurs still exist somewhere on this planet? Yes, and hear me out before you like RJ is into conspiracy theories. Underwater, there's some crazy shit going on. I think we can all admit that. There's a lot going on we don't know. You know, every year there's like, here's a list of new fish we found. And they're the most disgusting, incomprehensible creatures you can imagine. There has to be more. We're not even deep down there. Everyone's going, let's go to space. Let's go to space. We don't know anything about the ocean, and it frightens me because I think we're going to need to rely on it more and more at some point, and I just want to know what's there, and I don't even like to put my foot in a lake because I can't see what's in it. And if these scientists don't know, it could be anything. So I would say something, uh, uh, a descendant of the dinosaurs, more direct than us, uh, has, is definitely living underwater. Uh, Riz asks a fine question. Uh, why? And the answer is, I don't know anymore. And I've tried, man, I've really tried. And sometimes you, you think you have the answer, you go for it and you start to you grasp it. You try to grasp it and it's not there. You know, some people look at the world and, and wonder why. And I look in the world and wonder why. So I hope that explains a lot. Um, Maddie Rind, Maddie Hrind, there's an H in there. What's with wrestlers wearing boxing legend t-shirts? The fashion choice mystifies me. I'm actually wearing one right now. S Smoking Joe Fraser, who is, of course, a chain smoker and had emphysema and things of that nature. Um, they're from Roots of Fight. They put out those wrestling shirts, too. And I think... Uh, uh, 
you know, Muhammad Ali was in WrestleMania 1. I think I think there's a, a good connection. Wrestling uh, really was derivative of uh, boxing. They would be on the same bills back in the day. I think they've always had a very close relationship. Uh, the Roots of Fight shirts are cool. They're hip. They're very expensive. So people think they're a real status symbol. Obviously, I do because I don't watch boxing. Uh, and then they make uh, a lot of wrestling ones. I personally like the Andre the Giant ones, Bret Hart, Rey Mysterio. I just love how they look. I love the whole heritage vibe of it. However, my great dream, and I've messaged the Roots of Fight people, and I've told them constantly, is if they made a classic comedy collection, and they did a Jerry Lewis shirt, a Jack Benny shirt, uh, a Charlie Weaver shirt, perhaps a Paul Lynn shirt, who knows? That's really my dream. I just think they're cool and they're hip, but they could be hipper. Maybe music ones. I'll get a Jerry Vale shirt or a Vic Damone. Who knows? Or a Kate Smith. Oh, no, nobody likes her anymore. Sorry, she's canceled. Uh, the Cleveland Poet said, which of these poets would make the best wrestler? Edgar Allan Poe, Walt Whitman, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Longfellow couldn't have said it better. Mean Gene Okerlund said that. Uh, at WrestleMania 6, Robert Frost and Ralph Waldo Emerson. Gotta go with Poe. He's got it down. I mean, he's really, you know, the undertaker of the poetry world. He's got the raven. He has the imagery. Uh, he has the gothic tragedies that are, are so befitting of a wrestling ring. I think there would be no one better. In the ring, I think he'd be horrible because as, as much as I understood, he was very short. But uh, I think he would be a, a mastermind, a real manipulator, almost like a Jimmy Jacobs, in a sense. And I think Jimmy would take that as a compliment, that he's the Edgar Allan Poe of professional wrestling. Me, I think I'm, I'm the Fran Leibowitz. Uh, Ryan Quigley says, what is the worst part about Grand Bend, Ontario, and why is it caucus? Cocos. Cocos. Why is it Cocos? Cocos? Okay. Look, I have not been to Grand Bend, but now I'm thinking maybe I have for an indie show and I just don't remember it anymore. I love, you know how shitty a small town is when they have a word in the name of the town that says something good, like grand. It's not, it tells you it's not grand. You know how it's not grand? Because it's telling you uh, it's grand. That's like a waiter who comes to your table and is so raving about the food and is so excited and so polite that you know the food's going to be shit. I like to go to restaurants where uh, the people are a little rude. They're like, yeah, the food is good. What do you want from me? You're not going to get a song and dance. You're just going to get food. Uh, so Grand Bend, I would say Decent Bend at best. Uh, Gimme Biscuit says, what was Alf's favorite cat breed? Uh, what is with the Alf questions? I would say... Uh, maybe a tabby cat, something a little fluffier, something more uh, plump. He's not going to get a Siamese cat. There's no meat on the bone. I think you want something a little fluffy. He was fluffy himself, so I feel like he would like that. It would be a nice texture uh, to eat. Have we ever seen him eat a full cat? Does he just swallow it whole? Does he rip the head off? These are the questions I had, and that's why that sitcom's not very good. Uh, Boreas Rex said, what non-wrestling TV show should have a wrestling episode like the ones Murdoch Mysteries or Supernaturals did? Um, I would always like to see, um, you know, Curb, I think in the first season had a guy playing a wrestler. Uh, but I would love if like I was Richard Lewis's wrestling nephew and they came to see a show and they got into some hubbub there. Uh, there's so much mis trivial misfortune that befalls me at an indie show that it feels ripe uh, for Curb to do a wrestling episode. Taylor G. Taylor 13 says, you going to NXT? No, I'm not. Uh, I'll tell you why. Maybe you should tweet to Triple H and say, do you have any Cobb salad? It's on my list. Very straightforward. Mr. Zach Wood said, if you are the Fraser Crane of professional wrestling, I'm not, because I already said I'm the Fran Leibowitz, who are the Niles and Raws? Um, the Niles is maybe, maybe Dalton Castle, and the Raws would be Matt Taven, because I think they wear the same outfits. Sabrina, again, asking a question, bold, two questions. The Munsters or the Adams Family? It depends what we're talking about. The Munsters, to me, 
was a better TV show. The sick, I'm talking about the original sitcom, Fred Gwynn. Uh, better TV show and a uh, better theme song. Because otherwise it's... It's too, it's too simple, it's too commercial. That really, the Munsters theme had a groove. The Munsters were more supernatural, which was a lot of fun. However, they did some kind of TV movies where they were colorized. I think they changed the daughter. And if we're gonna go by movies, uh, things of that nature, I would say the Adams Family, the two Tim Burton movies with the wonderful Raul Julia, who I'm named after, uh, far surpassed both what the Munsters could be and what the original Adams Family could be. And they keep rebooting the Adams Family. They just gotta, they gotta hold up just a little bit. Zach Shieldwatcher says, what are your three favorite scary movies? My, that's a wonderful question. I don't know if, ah, yeah, this is a scary movie. I like the abominable Dr. Fibes starring Vincent Price. I like them a little more on the campy side. I like, what else terrified me? I really did enjoy uh, Cloverfield when it first came out, I got deep into it. I don't know if it's scary. It's a monster movie, I guess. Um, what else did I like? Scary, scary. Rosemary's Baby is also on my list. And Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. I like those movies that are not too, too supernatural. And there's this little level of realism. And the black and white makes you go, is this real? And of course, wonderful Betty Davis. Uh, Robski33 says... Who is your definitive Annie Oakley from a Broadway production of Annie Get Your Gun? Well, uh, how much time do we have? I'm going to be here for an hour. Uh, I'm biased because the first time I saw Annie Get Your Gun was with Bernadette Peters as Annie Oakley and Tom Wopat from The Dukes of Hazard. Uh, I thought she was fantastic. Uh, since then, another popular one has been Reba McIntyre. <clears throat> who's been okay. She's a little too much on the side of her KFC commercials. Finger licking good. Like it's so knowingly that Southern accent. Nobody talks like that. Bernadette had the right mix for me. And also uh, Ethel Merman. That would be my top two. Ty Five said, uh, now that I know you're a cat guy, how are your cats? Here's a fun thing, Ty, that happened last night. I uh, retired to my quarters to get ready for bed. And at the on the floor, at the end of my bed, were two turds of shit. And I, of course, first I checked my pants to make sure it wasn't me. And then I realized that it was a cat shit, two turds of cat shit. And now the difficulty with having two cats is, I don't know which cat did it. So this morning was very uncomfortable and one cat wasn't quite sure why and then the other one absolutely knew. But of course they're cats, so I can't tell. Look, if they're shitting on the floor, they're doing fine by me. The Kraken Slayer said, do Krakens exist? Kind of, in the sense, as I mentioned in the ocean, we're going back to the depth of the ocean. There's gotta be larger squids there and octopuses and things of that nature. Uh, what is a Kraken to me? Are they gonna rise up and cause a whole thing? Probably not. Uh, but there's definitely, if you're a Kraken Slayer, there's definitely some giant octopuses you can stab if you go deep enough. Uh, Kyle Perry said, how did you wind up teaming with David Arquette? Well, if you need the full story, it's at the top of my Twitter page. I collected all the tweets into a little moment, <clears throat> which is a thing Twitter started and they don't really use them anymore because they didn't catch on. Nevertheless, you can read it all in chronological order. To make a long story short, after hating him and defeating him, he was so taken with my work that he wanted to learn from me. And, uh, you know, I think it's a crime that I'm I've yet to be in a talk show because I feel like I'm undervalued by society and entertainment and wrestling in general. So he said, if you team with me, I will get you on a talk show. And I signed a horrible deal. I rushed into it. It was very ignorant of me. And I've been teaming with him and teaming with him. It's been going well despite my best efforts. And yet... I have yet to be on a talk show. So it, it's the, the real Twilight Zone ending that is my life. Jonathan says, are you like me in so much as in the series finale of Perfect Strangers, when it was revealed that Larry and Balky weren't really cousins at all, you chose to pretend that never happened? Yes, 
it's stupid. And I get when you want to end something like that, you have to kind of undo what's there to say this is over now. Uh, however, I think people were so in love with the characters that they still wanted them to live those lives. So they would ignore that reality. I know I certainly blocked it out. Uh, also reminds me of my, the one ultimate flaw with, uh, the Tim Burton, the first Adams Family movie was that, uh, you know, they find Fester, who's not really Fester. It's the guy pretending to be Fester. It's an imposter Fester. They say they found him in the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, and that whole ruse is revealed, but then it turns out actually it was actually Fester who got adopted by this woman and pretended to be himself. That was uh, a little too ridiculous. Um, but I think it's because people, there were two endings. One was it really wasn't Fester. They just adopted this random guy now as Fester. But apparently the cast went to, to Mr. Tim Burton and said, hey, that's a bad idea. You got to fix it. Uh, Shana Section said... What did you get Jessamine, uh, I guess Jessamine Duke, uh, there's a lot of Jessamines I know, for Valentine's Day? Uh, I did not get her anything. Uh, I did not get anyone anything for Valentine's Day. Uh, she's gotten me so many wonderful things. She just keeps sending them to the house uh, and they go unanswered. She must be quite a fan. Um, no, what did I get her? I gave her the gift of uh, retro video games and I've played them with her, uh, we played Family Feud, Super Nintendo Family Feud, uh, Guts on Super Nintendo, and Double Dare on NES, and they're on her little uh, video game channel. And, and when I'm on, it's a lot wittier than her playing Red Dead Redemption, saying things like, well, look, I'm riding another horse. So I gave her the gift of entertaining content on her channel, uh, and I, I hope it treats her very well. Um, scenario, says Santana, Stantana, Stantana, nice, scenario, you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you open your cabinet and you have both chunky and smooth peanut butter, which do you choose? I'll tell you something, I'm not eating any, I'm having a jelly and white bread and that's it, it's a very oily skin, sometimes you may be able to tell, I really should put makeup on, uh, and peanut butter and peanuts in general and nuts in general are very oily foods and I feel like they contribute to my oil production so I don't eat them. That's deeply personal. Stephen Hines says, why is Betty White the next, uh, why is Betty White the best golden girl? Next question. Uh, Zero Cajone says, so RJ City, who is your favorite wrestling tag team in history? My personal favorite, and I love them, and I'm crazy about them, is Adrian Adonis and Dick Murdoch. There is something about them. They're an odd couple tag team. I've been in a bunch of odd couple tag teams. Uh, I like when a tag team, you know, some people think tag teams have to be basically twins. We're the same gear wrestlers, same like Legion of Doom or uh, the Rockers or the Bushwhackers, but um, sometimes the odd couples really do mesh, and it creates this wonderful thing. Uh, I loved them. I also loved uh, Dave Schultz and Roddy Piper. Those, to me, are, are my top two. I love Nick Bockwinkle and Ray Stevens. Uh, those guys are tag team wrestling uh, to me. Uh, Beth says, which Golden Girl would be the best wrestling valet? Uh, I like the stage presence of B. If I was making an entrance, I want B behind me or in front of me or whatever. But I think Sophia has the dirtier, more ruthless mind. So if I was in a bind, I would want her. And she's sneakier, you know? She's just lower, and I feel like she could do more cheating. Funk as Puck says, ask RJ, have you ever seen an episode of The Charmings? Paul Winfield at his finest. Nope. Dr. Ken says, so does Jessamine Duke appreciate B. Arthur as much as you? And if not, is it David's fault? I assume... Uh, he's talking about David Arquette. Most things are David Arquette's fault. His existence is the butterfly effect that made a lot of my life way shittier than it should have been. Uh, does she appreciate B. Arthur? She hasn't gotten my full dissertation, but uh, at some point it's coming and she's going to have to get off her high horse uh, and realize how wonderful that woman truly is. Uh, Titan says, your feelings on the old House of Pain days 
with John Rambo. So when I was really young, I, there was this uh, wrestling place in Maryland I used to go to called the House of Pain, and it had a low beam, and it had posters all over the walls, and it was this crazy indie promotion school, and I, it was wild at the time. I knew, really, that's how I started learning the fundamentals of the business. I am fascinated, and I will hold it uh, very, very fondly. I also remember uh, I did a drill called the Rookie Drill, which was so brutal that when I was finished, for the next 30 minutes, I felt both high and drunk, and I realized I, I have no need to do drugs if I have indie wrestling. God bless those fine people. Uh, Brino, Variety, Brino Variety Show? Can we pick normal names? My wife and I welcomed twins yesterday. She's asleep due to the pain meds, and I can change their names to anything I want. What names would you choose? Oh, my. I could be here all day. I would say, uh, well, it depends. They're, they're twins, but are they two boys? Are they two girls? If they're two girls, you have to say uh, Laverne and Shirley. I think that's a good one. And if they're two, two boys, I would say Lou and Bud. Uh, and if they're a guy and a girl, Harold and Maud are, are perhaps the best way to go. Uh, Julie. Uh, Julie Canhausen Rules S says, who is your favorite phantom? I am a Michael Crawford Mark myself. She's saying that, not me. Not that I'm not. Uh, it depends what milieu of phantom you're talking about. I would say, uh, personally, uh, the phantom movie with Long Chaney is mind-blowing. The old silent film is fantastic and obviously less sympathetic. There's no music involved. But uh, he's great. It's a great performance, no matter what. And it has to be held in high regard. It's something totally different to this day. Uh, who else do I like? Michael Crawford, I liked very much. I've seen The Phantom, I think, five times on Broadway. I did not see the Paul Stanley version. I heard it's not very good. Uh, I was also, I was really, really, really not crazy uh, about Gerard Butler, because he decided not to sing. I guess he can't. So he decided to yell the lyrics to every song he had to sing. Not crazy about that. The fandom should be creepy. Michael Crawford has the creepiness uh, in his voice. Uh, sing once again with me. He does that law, uh, and it is creepy and old, and you're like, oh, there's more that's wrong with this guy than just his face. And to me, that's quintessential. Uh, to the character. I will also say, although it doesn't really count, the guy who played the Phantom in The Phantom of the Paradise, a wonderful Paul Williams movie that everyone should see. Alex Foster said, if you had to have a wrestling move named after you, what would it be? I would like just a really simple, a headlock, but you have to hold it for a certain uh, uh, amount of time. Maybe just a, maybe a, maybe a headlock, but then you also wave at the person. That's what I would like. That would be a me. That would be the RJ City headlock. If you played F. Mary Kill, and I'm saying F because I want to remain monetized with the other Golden Girls, Dorothy is not in play, smart because he knows my answers, who would get what? Well, we're ki killing Rose uh, immediately. Whether we're playing this game or not, we're killing her. Uh, who would I marry? I don't want to marry Sophia. That's going to be years and years and years of nagging. I feel like I would, I would marry... Blanche, because she's always good for a romp, and I just, I'm not a one-and-done guy. I'm someone who needs it. Uh, so I would uh, take Sophia for a romp. She would be Sprite for an evening, and then I would marry Blanche. I think it would be a wonderful a southern wedding. If you could wrestle one person, dead or alive, I've wrestled a dead person before, uh, and I've wrestled living people who had less charisma than the dead person, who would it be, and what type of match would it be? I, my dream match would be myself and David Arquette against Jerry Lawler and Andy Kaufman. And it would have to be in Memphis. And, um, yeah, that's it. It'll just be a Memphis tag match. Nothing made sense there. Anyway, it was crazy. You don't really need to lift the rules because they didn't seem to exist. Uh, yet another wrestling nerd says... Where does Married with Children rank when compared to the other classic sitcoms like The Golden Girls? Married with Children is something that was 
very much pushing the envelope at the time. And because of the way society progressed, uh, seems to even be more on the edge now with the, you know, misogyny, even though it's all in jest, um, I don't think it really, really sits well uh, anymore. So in that sense, it didn't age well, kind of through no fault of its own. It didn't really predict uh, that society would change that way, nor do I think it's a horrible sitcom. Uh, so where does it rank? I would say pretty low. Sometimes culturally things have a, a hard and fast impact and then they're too much of their time that they end up fading away. Jojo Yelich said, "When I will say, sorry, Mary with Children really gets the nod when it comes to use of a wrestler and wrestling episodes because they always had the wonderful King Kong Bundy. Jojo Yelich said, when will RJ answer any of the burning questions? Do you have an itching sensation you want to talk about? I'm answering them right now. Uh, Window Walter put a picture of a cat and it just says, ask RJ. And I don't know if the cat is looking for answers or simply asking questions, but it's gorgeous regardless. Uh... Salamando said no, but her blood on Central Time, I think because I use the hashtag, there's a bunch of bots, which is great. I'm excited to get involved with those people. Grow my base. Heel Heat Hot Sauce said, what's the one junk food that you will shamelessly eat every last bit of if it's around? Well, it's not what food is junk. It's all how you eat it. Uh, my grandmother made these things called Strufula Balls or Strufuli, and they're dough. And you roll them into like a ball. You know, you make a little thing with this. So you make a bunch of them. So it's a pile of balls, small balls. And you drizzle honey. You don't even drizzle. You you drown them in honey. And then you put uh, sprinkles and those hard uh, Italian candies on them. And they're delightful. She used to make them every Christmas and New Year's. And because they have honey on them, they will last for literally months. So you make a big batch and you leave it on the dining room table. And whenever you walk by... You just grab one, and I would have them uh, constantly. I would eat things like their junk food ones. She used to make me tomato salad, which was cut up tomato, stale Italian bread that was too stale to, to like eat freshly anymore, and then she would put basil and uh, oil and vinegar. And I ate it so much one summer uh, that on the way to the airport uh, to go home from New York, uh, she made some for me to have on the way. Because, you know, I'm her grandson. She wants me to eat. And at that point, I had so much of it on that ride to the airport that my body went, no more. And if I get any mix of that sensation anymore, I, I'm like, ugh. Because uh, my body has had too much tomato salad. Uh, Hid Cheese Henry says, what is a pun you enjoy? Mmm. Oh, my favorite ever, and I tweeted it oh, years and years and years ago, and I didn't get the love it deserved because I'm too smart for this crowd, is Will Orlando Bloom if Bill Withers? I'm going to hold for laughter. You know what? If you don't like it, I don't give a shit because it's good, and then it just means you don't get it. Mike said, thoughts on the Cats movie. Now, uh, obviously, deservedly a bomb in every way. And all those actors should be ashamed of themselves of being like, I love when they try to make fun of it now. Like, oh, that was bad. And it's like, we all knew it was bad. We all saw this, uh, you know, headed off the rails. And you guys thought, oh, I can save this. Um, I will say there is a Cats movie that I love. I have a VHS stage movie version of Cats, the Broadway play. What they did was actually film it, not in front of an audience, but they filmed the the actual musical, and it is delightful, and I think everyone should pop that in. To be fair, and I will reiterate again, Cats is a movie with no plot based on a Broadway musical with no plot based on a book of poems which has no plot. I don't know what they thought they were getting into. Uh, Funk as Puck said, so are you a top or are you a bottom? I guess you can say I'm a middle. Uh, Topher said, what is your favorite flavor of hamburger helper? I like that kind of Italian seasoning, that thing, because it's such a southern sounding food, especially after it was used by uh, Uncle Eddie in the original vacation, that I like when I try to dress it up and make it a Italian, a little a tomato basil seasoning. 
What are your top five Mark 7 limited shows? I have no idea what that means, and I don't know what to do with that question. And I, f I would feel bad, like, oh, there's something going on that I don't know what you're talking about, but it doesn't sound like you're talking about anything good. You know, people are like, oh, have you seen the Ozarks? And I was like, no, I haven't, and I'm good not seeing it. I get it. If you like it, good. I'm not going to shame you. But, like, it's not my bag, so leave me alone. Not everybody has to see every show. Tiger King. I get the guy that is a crazy piece of shit. I, I got to watch it for hours and hours and hours. I see one picture. I get the guy's life. Uh, Travis Steele said, who is your favorite glow wrestler? My absolute favorite was Matilda the Hun. Uh, I, I loved her. Her name was also Queen Kong. And I loved her so much. I add, I found her on Facebook. Uh, and I added her on Facebook. And she hits on me sometimes. And it's cute. And I like it. And I'm good. Uh, Peter Melnick said, Have you ever been in a submarine? I swear to God he answered this question last time. And I answered it. My grandmother took me one summer. Maybe it was like the Brooklyn... On the docks there, they had kind of exhibits. They would like a dock an old submarine and the kids could go learn about submarines. So it wasn't functioning, but it was essentially in the water. It wasn't under the water, but you got to see, oh, where they live. And my, aren't these beds very small? So that was it. Now, I, you know what? I'm good not going again. Tony Winter says, what do you consider an acceptable bedtime during quarantine? So this is my thing. Quarantine feels like there's no rules. It kind of feels like the space in between uh, Christmas and New Year's where like anything goes. You have to implement a structure in your life. I like to get up no later than nine. Ideally, I get up at seven, but sometimes that's not possible. So I would like to go to bed between 11 o'clock at night <laughs> and one o'clock in the morning. Uh, although that's not even that good. I should be getting more sleep. I should be going to bed at 10, to be honest with you. 10 to 6.30 is how I would like to sleep. Not always possible because the shows are on and people want to text you and they want to know what's going on. So I would say no later than 12.30. But, you know, enforce some structure in your life. Simon Graves said, if you were starring in a sitcom, what would the premise be? I mean, besides this, besides, you know, a wacky guy who has a Paul Lind a shower curtain as a backdrop, I would say I actually pitched a kid's show once where I was not the star, but I would play a strung out teacher who is into conspiracy theories. And I would I very much love to do that. And I hope I do get to do it. So that would that would be my choice. There was also one uh, there was a development one where I was like some evil space lord who moved next door uh, to a suburban family. Oh, there was another one where I played um, uh, a Viking child because Vikings are so large. Like myself now, I was like an eight-year-old Viking. I was just a giant child. That I, I would definitely still love to do. JT said, if you have to create the comedy gimmick Royal Rumble, who's in it and who wins? Well, let's say David Arquette, Dan Housen, Effie, Warhorse, Psycho Mike, Luigi Primo, uh, Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman would win. I think that's obvious. Uh, Morton Downey Jr. I think would be very good in it. Jay Leno would be very good. I would like to see it come down between Jay Leno uh, and Morton Downey Jr., uh, that that would be that would be it uh, for me. Uh, favorite Christmas gift when you were a kid says Eddie eight two G or a Eddie eighty eight Eddie eighty two G. How am I supposed to? What do you want? Eddie Gonzalez is his other name. Everybody's got eight names. Favorite Christmas gift when you were a kid? Uh, probably tickets to WrestleMania twenty. In Madison Square Garden. I was very moved. I did not think I would be able to go. And I went. And before I went, I went with my cousin. My grandmother was worried. She said to us, when you sit down and you take your coats off and you chair, when you stand up to cheer, make sure you have your coat with you. Because, you know, you just leave them like that. Someone will come from behind and grab your coat. Like there's a guy standing in the back going, I have them all now. Uh, that was her great fear. And I will never forget that. And our final question, boys and girls, is from No Yes Noise 
says the Regal Beagle or Cheers, where do you go for a drink? Well, if I'm going to a bar, I'm looking for love. I think I would have a better chance at the Regal Beagle if I was looking for a one night stand with a male or female because I'm pretty sure Jack Ripper was in the mood for anything. Uh, however, I do deeply, deeply have a crush on Lilith Crane, uh, B played by the wonderful B.B. Newirth, who I did try to date through mutual friends, and then I found out she has a husband, and I was very upset about it. Uh, we would make a good couple. Uh, who else is on my list? Ellen Green, still. But nevertheless, uh, I would like to waltz in there, and maybe she got into a fight with Fraser, and uh, I sweep her off her feet. And I give Fraser the old what for, and we kick him out of town. Then I get the spinoff. Then I'm moving to Seattle. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I know exactly what to do with those tossed salad and scrambled eggs. Guests of the RJ City Show, subscribe to his channel, follow him on social media, and buy his t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com slash RJ City.